Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and this is the next episode of Five Nights at Freddy's Animatronics Explained. Over the last few months, we have taken a look at many of the chilling, quirky, and bizarre robotic creations born from the mind of FNAF creator Scott Cawthon, and today we continue this exploration of series lore by taking a look at no doubt one of the creepiest, the Mangle. Mangle first appeared in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, and terrified players across the globe with its twisted and disfigured appearance. At a glance, Mangle resembles a clown. Of course, to many, clowns are unnerving to behold, so when paired with a mutilated endoskeleton, it's easy to see why Mangle gives so many players anxiety. Mangor's body is a mess of various endoskeletal parts, arranged in a nonsensical jumble. It has several white hands, with a freaky looking endo head attached to the end of a third arm. This humanoid head watches Mangle as it stalks and attacks the player. Mangle's head is reminiscent of Funtime Foxy from Sister Location. In fact, some believe that this is an ill-fated version of said animatronic. However, if we look closely, we can tell they are indeed slightly different models. Mangle's mouth is full of large white teeth, above which rosy red cheeks can be seen, and above these cheeks, a single glaring eye. While nobody knows the exact inspiration for this freaky design, rather than coming from family-friendly sources such as Chuck E. Cheese, like some of the other animatronics discussed in this series, it seems that Mangle was perhaps instead influenced by the monster designs of John Carpenter's cult horror classic, The Thing. This mass of contorted spare parts still has the ability to be flexible when it comes to movement though, often crawling through air vents and hanging from the ceilings of the various rooms it patrols. As Mangle hunts its prey, we hear a strange sound playing out. This audio seems to be a distorted radio frequency, and is likely a result of Mangor's damaged voice box. The frequency has been likened to that of a military-encoded RTTY-75W transmission. We can even hear distant voices through the crackle. Mangle uses these radio waves to communicate with the other animatronics, most likely to alert them of their next victim's location. During gameplay, Mangle will make its way through the vents and into the security office. If we use our security tablet before donning the Freddy mask to hide from Mangle, then it will make its way inside the office and hang from the ceiling as we continue the night. This makes finishing the night almost impossible, as we must use the security camera to wind the music box, but doing this will allow Mangle to attack. <laughs> You may be wondering why I refer to Mangle as it. This is mainly because Scott has never officially confirmed which gender Mangle takes. When asked directly, this was his response. Okay, people have been asking me about Mangle's gender for almost a year now, and I think that it's finally time to answer that burning question about whether Mangle is a boy or a girl so that this community can finally put the matter behind them. The answer is yes. Scott's trolling just as hard as ever, as you can see. Mangle has indeed been referred to as both genders in the past, and so may be genderless. However, despite this, it was given a voice in both Ultimate's Custom Night and FNAF Special Delivery. This voice is female and performed by actress Gina Rundus. Take a listen. Now I get to play Take Apart and Put Back Together. You won't feel a thing. I wanted to wait until just the right moment to drop in. I must be made whole! So at the very least, Mangor's voice is feminine. Outside of Ultimate Custom Night, FNAF AR, and FNAF 2, Mangle also appears in the Vent Repair Mission within FNAF Help Wanted, and in several of the minigames found within its Curse of Dreadbear DLC. And not only that, Mangle has its own 8-bit minigame in FNAF 3 called Mangle's Quest, as well as a brief easter egg during a minigame in FNAF 4. 
But what are Mangor's origins? How did this version of Funtime Foxy end up in such a twisted state? The best explanation given comes from everybody's favourite disembodied voice, Phone Guy, during Night 3 of the second game. They tried to remake Foxy, you know? Uh, they thought the first one was too scary, so they redesigned him to be more kid-friendly and put him in Kid's Cove uh, to keep the toddlers entertained, you know. But kids these days just can't keep their hands to themselves. The staff literally had to put Foxy back together at the end of every shift. Eventually, they just stopped trying and left him in some kind of take-apart, put-back-together attraction. Now he's just a mess of parts. I think the employees refer to him as just the Mangle. So as you just heard, Mangle was a replacement for the original Foxy design, which was deemed too scary for kids. However, toddlers visiting the pizzeria were drawn to this revised version of Foxy and kept breaking it apart. Eventually, the staff grew tired of rebuilding Funtime Foxy and so decided to simply allow it to be taken apart and put back together day in and day out, resulting in the accidental birth of Mangle over time. And now we've taken a look at Mangle itself, what about the other forms throughout the series? While Mangle doesn't feature the variety of alternate designs of an animatronic such as, say, Freddy, it does nonetheless appear in two other forms during the mainline games. The first of these forms is the variant found in FNAF 3 known as Phantom Mangle. Like the other Phantom animatronics, this version of Mangle features the same character model, but has a burnt up look, foreshadowing the fire that erupted within Fazbear's Fright, the building in which the game takes place. Phantom Mangle's skin is a stained green colour, and its eyes glow a piercing white, staring at us from the shadows on camera 4. This is the only location where Phantom Mangle will appear, and if spotted, it lets out an ear piercing sound. Once spotted, Phantom Mangle appears in the security office, where it continues making its deafening sound, preventing the player from hearing other important audio cues. Eventually the Phantom will disperse, causing our audio equipment to go down and require rebooting. As you may have noticed from this footage, Phantom Mangle also became a selectable terror within FNAF mashup Ultimate Custom Night. Finally, we have Nightmare Mangle. What a way to make arguably the creepiest of all FNAF creations that's a little bit more horrifying. Nightmare Mangle's body is even more twisted and incomplete than its other counterparts. It features a single hand, yet has three long legs, all ending in long, clawed feet. The endoskeletal humanoid head now looks demonic, with a single glowing red eye and sharp, pointy teeth. Of course, it's Nightmare's head which is most terrifying to behold, sharing similarities with the design of Nightmare Foxy. Unlike the original Mangle, who may or may not be female, Ultimate Custom Knight states unequivocally that Nightmare is a male animatronic. Despite this, we do not hear him speak. Nightmare Mangle also never hangs from the ceiling, at least not during gameplay. He first showed up during FNAF 4 in the Halloween update, replacing Nightmare Foxy, and would sneak down the hall and into the bedroom closet to surprise attack the player. This is exactly the kind of monster that makes something as harmless as a closet seem so creepy by night. Mangle has featured rebranded skins too, which can be found in FNAF AR. Most recently we saw this with its magician form. However, in terms of mainline games, that's pretty much it for this animatronic. We are getting close to the end of this series, but I do want to thank you for joining me on this nostalgic walk through FNAF history. Remember to check out the rest of this series if you haven't seen them yet, and if you enjoyed this video, leave a like down below, as well as a comment, and of course subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.